Hello, and welcome to the first of eight films about calculations. These deal with the kind of, I suppose, the simpler end of the scale that are needed um, for year 11. Uh, if you're in year 12 and watching this, um, these calculations are still very important to you. It's just that you should have covered them already in year 11. That doesn't mean you can't do them again now. Okay, um, we're starting off fairly simple. We're looking at the difference between two different kinds of formula and this film doesn't actually cover any calculations as such. It just kind of it tells you what sort of things you're going to need to do in these calculations. Okay, so we'll start off by looking at the difference between an empirical and a molecular formula. It's often easiest to show the difference between these two kinds of formula um, using an example. Okay, so if I take glucose which, if you remember anything about respiration, you'll probably remember that its formula is C6H12O6. This tells us that one molecule of glucose has this exact number of atoms. So a molecular formula is the exact number of atoms in um, a molecule of a substance. It, so that we can cover ionic substances as well, Instead of saying molecule, we say in one repeating unit. Okay. Whereas an empirical formula, that just tells us the simplest whole number ratio. Of atoms in a substance. So for glucose, in this particular example, um, the simplest whole number ratio here would be CH2O. And that means for every one carbon, there's two hydrogens and one oxygen. It doesn't tell us precisely what's in a molecule, but it does tell us a ratio. Okay? What this, I suppose if you only know the empirical formula, so you, you know this, but you don't know what the molecular formula is, what this tells you is the molecular formula could be any multiple of this. Okay? So if we looked at, say, water, Okay, the empirical formula of water is H2O because that's the simplest whole number ratio of atoms. The molecular formula is exactly the same, okay, because there are two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom in one repeating unit or one molecule of water. Okay, so there are times when the two can be the same, but the meaning of the two terms is actually very different. When we're trying to find an empirical formula, which is what this next film is going to be about, um, we're not actually going to do examples of this in this film. If we're going to find the ratio of atoms, which is what an empirical formula is, first of all, you're going to have to count numbers of moles. And you should know the formula for this by now, okay? The number of moles of any substance is the mass divided by its molar mass, okay? If you've forgotten that, it's probably worth doing some calculations practice before you start on empirical formula, just so that you're in the habit of using that formula, okay? Um, what else do you have to be able to do in one of these questions? Well, you have to find the smallest whole number ratio and then plug the numbers into a formula. So let's say that I got a ratio like the one I was looking at before of 1 to 2 to 1. Then whatever my elements were, x, y, z, okay, I'd be putting those numbers into the formula like so. If I just had two elements and maybe the numbers were 3 and 4 and that was the simplest whole number ratio, Let's call my elements A and B this time. Okay, it would be A3, B4. So that's what I mean by plugging the numbers into the formula. And the last thing that I'm going to say in this film is um, how you find a ratio of numbers, because some people find this a little bit tricky. Let's say I've got some uh, slightly odd-looking numbers, and I can't immediately see what the whole number ratio is. Um, then what I do to find the whole number ratio is I divide all these numbers by the smallest of those numbers. Okay, so if I divide all these numbers by 1.33, I should find the smallest whole number ratio here. Okay, it could be that you can just do these things in your head and that's absolutely fine, but by dividing all the numbers that you're given by the smallest of those numbers, you'll find the whole number ratio. Okay. So they're the sort of things you need to be able to do in these calculations. The next film will actually look at a couple of example calculations that use these skills. Okay, so it shouldn't be too tough. 
but just be sure that you're happy with this before you move on.